Welcome back to Film Vloggers. We review films of flog dead horses, so you don't have to. Is this week's film choice a complete waste of your viewing time? Much like flogging slash beating a dead horses, get it? Please head over to www.filmvloggers.com to check out all of our previous vloggings. And while you're there, maybe hang out for a while, look around and vote for our next film. Click on vote or visit www.filmvloggers.com forward slash vote. Are you an idiot? If so, please check out our idiot's guide to reviewing us where even a big dummy like you can leave us a red-hot review. Here at Film Vloggers, we pride ourselves on offering one-star content with five-star effort. Once on the website, please click on Idiot's Guide or visit us at www.filmvloggers.com forward slash review hyphen us. That should have been Idiot's Guide. My fault, I didn't change the URL. Annoying. Once again, filmvloggers.com forward slash review hyphen us. Believe it or not, we now have a Patreon. I know what you're thinking. You have the audacity to ask us to pay to receive more of this. Pause for dramatic effect. Yes. We have a Patreon-exclusive show called Nit Pickers. I think you'll like it. Please visit www.filmflogs.com forward slash support hyphen us. Again, that hyphen is annoying. Should have removed it. Or head straight to our Patreon page. Patreon.com forward slash film wafflers. No idea why I did film wafflers. Another mistake. Where you can support us for as little as one British pound. Or a buck fifty. And while you're on the website, punch that big purple subscribe button and tell a friend about the vlog. Wife, husband, boyfriend, girlfriend, partner, mistress, your nan, granddad, your kids. They can tell their friends. They can tell their friends at school about the vlog. But in all seriousness, this really helps the podcast grow and enables us to enrich or ruin the lives of the hundreds of millions of earlobes we haven't reached yet. You obviously edit stuff out. There's no fucking takes. There's no go, right, let's just stop the recording. Let's do that again. Well, yeah, you can do. (laughs) <laughs> right well i look at my notes like this so yeah. there'd be a lot of time where i won't even i won't even look at you because i'm looking well, don't, at my notes you look at me God, thank you. you sound like fiona yeah don't look at me yeah right when okay do start? yeah it's recording so oh we can go whenever oh yeah well if you didn't think you could get any worse than fiona <laughs> you were wrong yeah it's mama time yes hello mum how are you oh hello ben very well you finally allowed me into your um domain quite insulting that um, i've had to wait for this amount of time before you allow me to come on but hey. yeah and all you've done is moan about the film flogger studio since you got up here well it is a little bit cramped and can i just say is this not some kind of poop spray that you've got up here when you do poops and you've got it oh, on don't, the table. Oh, don't spray that. Fiona sprayed that before recording. Yeah. And all I was doing I, was just swallowing it yeah, the whole time. I heard Trying that. Trying to speak, coughing. I listened to that this morning. It's actually poop spray that you've got up here it's not, when no. you do poops. No, it's it's just a air freshener. I thought it was that VI poo. No. Oh. Is this when the bullying starts? Who's bullying who? Well, you try and bully me. No, mum. Can't do it like that. Stop touching the microphone. Well, I'm not going to bully, am I? Don't do that. There's got to be a level of respect, hasn't there, I Absolutely. suppose? Absolutely. But you've obviously got to be careful what you say, because obviously whatever you say will show on how I am as a character. Exactly. So exactly. I think everyone's got to be very careful. Oh, oh, not wrong with me. Right, okay, so <laughs> here we are. What are we doing then? We are doing the Blair Witch Project. Yeah. That's what we're doing. Shall I start? We're talking about well, the Blair We've Witch. already started. <laughs> okay, Blair Witch Project. Yep. IMDB 6.5. Right, so you're you're doing the Fiona bit, are you? Well, I'm just going to... Have yeah. you got the director there as I've well? I've got... Trust me. Right, okay. Trust me. I'm just going to get into it. You can stop me at any point. Watch. I accidentally hit, hit the boom Yeah, on. that's what happens. Yeah, yep. that's okay. what happens with Fiona. So, IMDB 6.5, which I actually think is scandalous, but hey. Um, Should have been more. It's about right, I think. So, three film students travel to Maryland to make a student film about a local urban legend, the Blair Witch. According to legend, the Blair Witch is the ghost of Ellie Kedwood of the late 1700s, who lured children into her home to draw blood from them. Kedwood is found guilty of witchcraft, banished from the village... And presumed dead as it was, uh, she was living at that time through a bad winter. Sorry, where, where you get? What, sorry, what, what is this? By midwinter, all of Kedwood's accusers, along with half the town's children, vanish, fearing a curse. The townspeople flee Blair and vow never to utter any Kedwood's name again. That's where the legend started in terms of the witch. And there's also that runs along parallel with that 
another myth, which was in Burkittsville. It's called the Burkittsville Seven. In 1940, seven children are reported missing from Burkittsville, formerly Blair. Their bodies are found buried in the cellar of town resident Rustin Parr. Parr is later executed for his crimes based on the testimony of Kyle Brody, an eighth child who managed to escape. These men, uh, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Was that necessary? Well, we have to talk about the myths. Well, I know, but why don't we just talk about the myths? You've just spelled them out. No, because there's lots more that we can talk about regarding the myths later on. But that's right. why the students originally go in and start doing their filming. It's based on those original yeah. myths. Or yeah, I know there was I know myths. there was all this shit about the mythology it was then put on a website. Yes. So you could go on and then look at the website and then you get yep. you could read Heather's diary and you could yep. all that sort of stuff. More mythos and more explanation as to what each yes. crime was throughout the years and yes. the, when, yeah. when does it go back to? So Eight, it, 19th century. 17th hundredth, isn't it? It right. went back to that. So it just helped Lovely. with the complete myth of it all. Oh, God, we need to set now. We need to change this. <laughs> Fuck it now. It's not very close either, is it? It's really close, but the problem is, is I can't move without hitting it because it's literally in my teeth. Literally, my front teeth are scraping against the microphone. I know. Yeah, but that's because you've, you've backed right into the corner. Well, you? it's because I banged my head within 30 seconds of coming in here. Oh, li- oh! Basically, it's like an anal probe. <laughs> literally, well, oh, it's literally you my put, teeth put your hands like by your side, are literally grating against the microphone. Well, I know, because it's because obviously it's des- this is designed for a fucking leprechaun who just about fits in it. Well, You're obviously a normal sized human, well, yes. so we, we start running into problems. Yes, well, it's not my fault, is it? Okay, so going back, oh, might, I'm not sure about that mic position. Oh, oh, I was going to have to do. Goodness. Right. Okay. So fine. That's, so that's the two main. They're the two main plot lines of, of the reasons why yes. they're in the woods looking for the yeah, Blair yeah, Witch. Yeah. So we've got the directors, which is David Mirick and Eduardo Sanchez. Um, they later went on and obviously did the Book of Shadows, which was basically Blair Witch Two. So they were directors. They directed and writers. the sequel, did they? Yes, Blair. Which, which was a load of shit. Exactly. So going back to the actual Blair Witch, uh, Blair Witch project yeah there was a budget of sixty thousand dollars it made 250 million dollars unbelievable in other words so the ratio of what they made one dollar made ten thousand nine hundred and thirty maths as well dollars to each dollar that was spent yeah it was it was more than that low it was more than that because you got to think about the post-production so it got ramped up to like i don't know two hundred thousand yeah between two hundred thousand five hundred thousand so yeah still minuscule in the grand scheme of things but so the film was in the guinness book of records at that time for the top budget box office ratio because every dollar made so much money which is amazing really i mean it was filmed in the black hills forest in seneca i don't know how to pronounce it the creek state park in montgomery county and some of the scenes were shot in actual burkittsville right so it was released in 1999 sequels 2016 yeah um, it was a, the found footage genre. genre. Yeah. Uh, Blair Witch was responsible for this genre. Eight years later, this particular genre struck gold again when Paranormal Activity oh, came out. Jesus. And that became the most profitable film of all time, apparently. What? What do you mean, of all, what do you mean of all time? Paranormal Activity. Do you mean in the found footage genre? I believe so. Well, it's not. I believe so. Hang on, I need to look at this. Oh. Basically, well, you know, Google you're doing a, you're doing a Fiona, is. you're spouting out trivia, <laughs> and you're not, and you can't fucking back it up. So if someone challenges you, you go, yeah, well, that's, that's what trivia no, said. I've got, I read, I read other. Yes, yeah, you read trivia. <laughs> yes, yeah, you read trivia. I read. And someone other goes, trivia. well, hang on a minute, is, are you sure? Yeah, yeah, that's what IMDb said. <laughs> well, the Blair Witch took two years of planning. Well, hang on. So Paranormal Activity had a budget of. 28 million. Yeah, completely different. Yeah. Right. So, how, how much? Because it was eight years later as hang well. On, how much did it make then? Oh, no, hang on. No, hang on. But 28 million. Right. So, a budget of 215,000 after post production, it made 193 yeah. million. Well, that's not right then, is it? That's not right, is it? Maybe the ratio, because it overall was cheaper than Blair Witch, but it didn't make more than Blair Witch but maybe, in the box office. Maybe in this particular genre. Well, I still, doesn't make, I still doesn't make sense because they're both. Found footage films in the genre. Yes, but did it not make more money? Oh, anyway, it's whatever. Well, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yes. Right. You just ruined my flow. 
Right. Shall so we get, anyway, basically... Shall we took, get into the film then? Yeah, it took right. two years of planning, this particular film. Right, yeah. It was shot over eight days. The actors were paid $1,000 each per day, and it took eight months to edit. 19 hours of filming was cut for the final 80 minutes film. The actors played themselves. You had Heather Donahue, Mike Williams, and Josh Leonard. Heather Donahue went on into medical and grew medicinal marijuana later on in life. Mike Williams carried on acting and is a counsellor in uh, school. And Josh Leonard acted and was in True Detective and Bates Motel. Well, I don't think Heather was going to get many acting gigs, was she, after this, after this performance? Yeah, I have to say, I've got to say, she literally was an absolute pain in the arse uh, for me yeah. for the entire film. Um, I have to say, though, the best part of this was how they marketed the film. Because obviously this was a, a new genre, this particular found footage. Well, no, I'll stop you there. It wasn't actually. The found footage had been around for a while before this. Okay. Cannibal Holocaust. Off. Have you seen that? No. No. The last broadcast, which was the year before this. I haven't seen that actually, but apparently that's not bad. But was it as, mar- as widely marketed? Well, no. No, but as you said about this whole, the marketing thing, that this is what's created this monster didn't it, in Blair yeah, Witch. It's incredible because Well it was... you couldn't do it now because we don't the age we live in now it's not Yeah. So this would have been what 90 Well you well you'll know more than me about this because I was fucking 7 years old. So when this was being marketed, yeah. How accessible was it? I know it was one of the first films to be heavily marketed on the internet, but the vast majority was still dealing with dial-up internet. So this particular film, as I understand it, they it was the first time that the internet was used for a viral marketing campaign for a film. And the campaign was all around. It was a very clever, psychological, mind coercion, persuasion form of marketing. It also was coupled with the things of putting like the missing pe- persons posters up again all around cinemas. So it was almost a mind manipulation. It was so cleverly done before they actually dropped the film. It was an incredible way of marketing the film and how they'd done it because by the time that the film was released, people actually believed the footage was real. I remember the first time I watched Blair Witch Project, I was a lot younger at the time, but if I remember correctly, I was confused because I also thought that it was real. The footage could have been real at that time. And that was just based on me reading things about it or reading in magazines about it. So when I first watched it, I actually didn't appreciate the fact how cleverly it was marketed because I believed it when I first watched it because it's confusing because you don't, because of the way it was filmed, it was so cleverly done to actually give cameras to three unknown actors and told to do it the way they did it was so cleverly done. Whether you like the film or you don't like the film, it was such a clever way of making a film. It was such a unique idea. And you're putting your trust into three unknown actors. You're giving them a couple of cameras and going, there you go, we want you to do this, we want you to do that. It was such a risk. Whether well, it was, it was a, no risk. Was it was it? a massive it was, risk it was a, because you're spending a, that a amount multi, of money. Multi, well, yeah, I know, but in the grand scheme of things, it's not, is it? It's not, here's a $15 million budget. Yeah, but you're you talking about 60000 back in 19... 19- I know, but whoever financed this, obviously, it was obviously that, was, that was whatever, wasn't it? I, yeah. I imagine whoever's financed this has just gone, all right, I've got X amount of money. Yeah. This but, is something a bit different. But back in, I mean, don't forget, they started it in 1995. It wasn't released until 99. So it was made in 95, as I understand it. I thought it was 97, you said. No, it was released in 99, wasn't it? Yeah. But it was, I think that it was actually filmed... I believe it can't take around... four fucking years in post production. Yeah, I think they they were um, university ninety seven. I think I think it was ninety seven. Was it ninety seven? They were university students when they come up with this idea, and they wrote it back when they were um, film students. And it was a thirty five page script, made up script, mythological script that they put together, which they basically gave to these three actors and said, "Here you go. This is what we want. Get on with it." I think however you pull it apart, I think the fact of what those actors did with minimal amount of information, I actually think it's almost really a bit of a masterpiece, personally, how I see it. I actually think For for what it is, yes. Similar to, well, most films, when me and Fiona were talking about The Sixth Sense, it's one of those where you'd love to go back and go to the cinema and be walking in and going, right, so what is this? So this this is actually a real, based on a true story. This is, okay, this is going to mm. be interesting. And the idea of being in the cinema 
or if he rent it and he still hadn't found out the truth that it was actually fake mm. and watching it for the first time, you'll know better than me. Yeah. Watching it for the first time and thinking, oh my God, like yeah. what's happening? Have they solved this this crime? Who's done this? Mm. It can't be. It's not a witch, is it? Because they don't exist. So yeah. what's happened? Who's done this? But I think I think the first time around when it was first introduced, it was one of those films whereby it was difficult to question because you almost still believed that it was true footage. So you, it was so difficult to question, I think, at that time because you actually didn't know what to believe because the, the final scene of that film is so disturbing, in a sense. It's so simplistic but brilliantly disturbing. And at the time, when you've got to think back to 1999 when it, that came out, it was it was a psychological sense thriller in in a sense. Well, it was no, all there's psychological. No, there's no doubting the the impact it had on the the genre, on pop culture, reinvented hmm. found footage, or even though it did exist, it brought it into the mainstream. And of course, it, it's not going to age that well in parts because its biggest thing was this is a true story. Yes. So once that's gone, then you know it's yes. not you then start just looking at it as a film and then you start yeah. watching it as just a conventional film, yeah. which is reasonably well made. Yeah. But the thing is, watching it as just a film, you start going, right, well, let's, let's start analysing the plot. Let's start analysing what they're doing within the film. Let's start looking at the characters. Mm. Well, the characters are just fucking dreadful. Well, Namely, Heather. Yeah, Heather. I mean, w- I mean, again, with that, when you look back, I mean, I've watched it over the last couple of days. I've actually watched it properly all the way through and then I skimmed watched it again this morning because watching it again, I learned so much more than from I did when I originally watched it because there was a lot of things I missed. Things like at the start of the film when they're interviewing the locals, you get the um, the guy that talks about um, the par guy who killed the children where he would make one stand in a corner facing the wall whilst he killed someone else, another child, because he couldn't look into the eyes of the children. And I hadn't remembered that before. And again, so by listening to that and hearing that, that gives you also it links to the end of the film because Mike is looking in the corner of the room at the end. So it links with that first part of that locals interview where he's saying about the children are are forced into the corner to face the wall. So that links. When you look at um, the crazy old lady at the start of the film, when she was um, interviewed, you go in, you walk through her gate and it's a twig gate that's tied with pieces of cloth. So you connect that to when they find the twig parcel with the teeth in it because it makes you think, Oh, is she part of that? Are these mad locals in the woods? Are they part of it? Because there's a twig parcel with bloody teeth in it. So it almost gives you this, oh, makes you think again. Because the first time you watch it, you don't connect it. You don't connect all those other little bits and pieces. But it's when you watch it again, you start connecting it. You go, oh, it makes you question, could it be the locals? Are they just mental locals that are in the woods that are... Or they don't like the fact that they're there filming. So there's lots of things you actually can start questioning when you watch it again and you link all those conversations up and those little quick pieces of film footage. So I think it's interesting the way they've done that. It's not consistent in terms of how they film it because there's there's a scene that I, I've watched it and watched it and I can't get my head around it where they Josh goes missing. Uh, no, it's when the three of them are in the tent and they all run out of the tent and they're filming as they're running out of the tent. And you've got Heather filming. And it's her footage because her voice is the loudest voice. So it's her videoing. But in front of her, I thought that was Heather in front of her running because it had long hair with a hat and it had her cardigan on. So I'm thinking that's not consistent. You're watching her film, watching her run in front. And I had to keep watching I don't it. remember this. Yeah, if you watch it again, it might be my interpretation. I've got well, hang wrong. on. So the bit when they're running out and she goes, well, what the fuck is that? Yeah, I mean, she's running in you're, front you're su- of her. You're supposed to see the whoever, Michael, Josh, was supposed to pan the camera around and you were supposed to see a figure. But they, they missed it. The guy, whoever it was, missed it. Right. And they just went, oh, do you know what? We'll just yeah. leave it. We won't do it again, which I yeah. think is probably for the best. Well, if you think there's 19 hours worth of footage they've had to cut, that's why it's not consistent because of how they cut it and edited it. So there is inconsistency um, throughout the film. So it, that stood out for me because I couldn't work it out and I had to keep rewinding it to work it out. And I can't work it out because I think they've got that wrong. But 
there was probably more footage they could have used, but I guess you, you, you've got to cut it back to a certain amount of time, otherwise you're going to be there for hours. I mean, my biggest question is, they're in the woods for five days. How have their batteries still live? I don't know how their cameras managed to carry on filming after five days of being in the woods. Well, so that's a massive know, flaw, isn't they just, it? They've just got backpacks full of shit, haven't they? Yeah, but yeah, five days of filming with cameras, I can't believe that all of them didn't go flat. But... There's, you know, I was looking on YouTube and there's all these theories on YouTube. There's a a 10 million view YouTube of um, a a theory that Josh and Mike planned it to to kill Heather. And then there's obviously... Couldn't blame them. Yeah, but there's obviously all these other theories that actually put that, scupper that, because it doesn't make sense. I mean, I watched a couple of them and it doesn't make sense. But I think... Well, I know, but that's like saying, oh, so what what does make sense is there must be a witch in the the woods. That makes perfect sense. Yeah, but but that's why you question it, isn't it? There's so many things. I think what that film has achieved is the fact that it's achieved so many types of theories that people can think about. And I think if a film has been made that makes you think about it so much and come up with so many different theories, I actually think that makes it quite a successful yeah, film. Yeah, so ultimately the thing is you can't really make this film now because no. it's not going to work. No. Because people are going to jump on Twitter and go, oh, yeah, there's this new film out. Oh, yeah, it's a load of shit, by the way. No. The second something comes out or you're hearing that something's in the works, spoilers and leaks come out straight away. Mm. And it goes all over the internet. Mm. So then you know about it. You know about it six months in advance before it even comes out. Yeah. Yeah, no, true. But do you not think that the film does still hold up? That's what no, now. that's what I'm saying. That's why that's why the film is so memorable. It came just at the right time. Mm. It's all about timing, wasn't it? The internet was still up and coming, the internet was yeah. still shit. So the marketing ploy that they used was effective because yes. it came at the right time. Yes. I'm saying you can't do that now. It wouldn't no. work. No. No, that's no, that's absolutely true, and you can't replicate that. And I think them going on to doing Blair, uh, the Blair Witch two, and I think probably I've not seen that. I don't think. I mean, maybe I have. That's maybe I've seen bits of it years dreadful. ago, but I, it, that was never going to work in a sense. Anyway, I mean, I don't know what the synopsis of that is or how that went. Oh, but, um, group another group of people go to the woods and then start having visions and so. I don't yeah, know. well, yeah, yeah. junk. It, I think it's a film that can't be replicated, and and I, and I think that you can't. The way that it was done, the fact that these these characters were given walkie talkies and given little snippets of notes and instructions, they followed. They went through the woods via GPS, so they had to get to different destinations. They were then rationed. Hey, I wasn't G- Surely GPS was quite a new thing at this yeah, point. Yeah, I, I thought about that. I questioned that as well. But there must have been. It must have been. It must have been. It's well, it must have been, have been a reasonably new tech. Te- yeah, yeah. I don't know when that came into play. To be fair, but it must have been there at that time right was it something to do with the the directors the directors must have been the guys who were punching the tent yeah and so snapping the they twigs had and, oh, wood, they had that? blocks of wood that they were banging together so what the, about the baby so the, the baby, baby the, was not, well, not the baby's children yeah so the children's voices it was one of the director's mothers there was a school that was a uh that was opposite one of the mums and she recorded it for them and then they used that in the distance, so they played it out in the back of the woods. So everything they got was done cheaply because they were on a budget. So all those children came from a school, which was opposite one of the director's mothers. So they also went in and smacked wood together. They broke twigs. They went into the middle of the night and put the piles of stones outside the tent. The actors were never allowed outside of the tent during the night. They were told not to come out because there were going to be things that were happening. So the producers and the directors, they were the ones that were banging on the tent and everything. But they were so scared. One of the actors was so scared because of the children um, freaked him out, completely freaked him out. So the reactions that you get are quite real because it completely right. freaked so, him out. So how much was the intertwining of, of the fiction and reality? How much was there? So at the end, I know the actors got snippets in the morning or whatever. They got yeah. what their character was going to do, right? So yeah. you're Heather. Yeah. You're going to become even more unbearable this yeah. day. Yeah. Josh, you're going to start questioning yeah. Heather. And Mike, oh, we've got a real twist for you. You're going to steal the map from Heather somehow and kick it into the creek. So, yeah, there's there's a lot of map conversation. There's lots of asking about where the map is. Can I hold the map? Heather, can I have a turn with the map? Heather, of course, the control freak that she is, keeps hold of it like her life depends on it. It takes up like 20% of the film. 
So they were given snippets and direction, but it was left to the actors to improvise. The reason why they rationed their food was because they wanted them to feel more desperate. They wanted to become more argumentative because their tolerance levels were decreasing. So they did that deliberately so they could get more real life reactions. So they started getting shitty with each other, especially Josh and Heather, um, the directors had to intervene at some points during the the filming because Josh and Heather were falling out so much. And at times they had to stop and intervene because it got so so bad. So what about the ending then? So the ending, cleverly done as well, they didn't know how they were going to end the film. They didn't know right up until the last minute how they were going to actually end that film. And that film was ended simply because they told um, Mike to fall over He was directed, instructed to fall over. When he fell over, apparently they then whispered in his ear to get up and stand into the corner. So that's what he did. So no one else, Heather didn't know what to expect when she came down the stairs. Nobody knew. So when Heather came down, she had no idea what he was going to be doing at that time. Right, but then what happened to Heather? Did someone go, Heather, uh, and what, punch the camera out of her? Yeah, well. And then what, she fell over? uh, She obviously got an instruction, a separate instruction, and her instruction was whatever it was. So it was very cleverly done because they were given limited instructions. So they actually didn't know for definite what everyone was doing at one time. So it was actually as a surprise, it came as a surprise to them, which added to the shock value of, I guess, their acting. I actually think when you think about it, the fact that they actually come away with this footage and it worked so well because that iconic, there's two iconic scenes in that film. The first one was Heather, close up, not Oh, yeah, hang on. What's that then? So what's that? So Is, Is that her actually snotting? Yeah, all, all of it. All of it is her yes, snotting. That is her snotting. So that you've got the first iconic scene. So that was her in that close-up shot in that tent, and then the second one was that final scene where he was facing the wall. Just simply him facing that wall was so chilling because nobody knew why. There's been you know there's been ideas that. Josh was in the corner face, pointing a gun at him and that's why he was facing the wall. There's all those ideas and that he then killed what? Heather. Where the fuck's he got a gun from? Yeah, there's all these what? theories. Oh, so it's not the witch, it's yeah. just Josh has got a gun now. There's all these theories. There was a theory that the witch uh, took over Mike's mind and that's why he got rid of the map because he was obsessed by the witch. Oh. He was possessed right, by well, the that's, witch. Let's not get too so there's all these theories, it. which I think are shy. I don't like them. I like the fact... It's the unknown. I like the fact that you don't know for definite. You don't know what happened. There is a mystery to it. I love that final scene. I think that final scene is iconic. And I think it's one of the most famous scenes for a horror movie, which is one of the most simplistic scenes that you'll ever find in a movie, in a horror movie. It's so psychologically chilling. Blurring the lines between fiction and reality with these characters and these actors is that they're not, acting as such they are actors but they're just playing themselves yes so that's why in some ways you look at heather and go oh she's one of the worst characters you're ever going to see in a film oh but that's that's just really effective she's doing a great job but then like well is she because she she's kind of just playing herself which is the concerning part so you think well actually is heather just actually really gross because she's not she's not really acting yeah she's kind of playing herself Yeah, no, and I, and, I, and I agree with that. And I think probably if you look back and you think about the scene where Heather is at that graveyard, that cemetery, and oh. she's filming. So she's acting within acting. Yeah, but what a load she? of shit that is. Which was awful. Yeah, but so, she films that yeah. after she's spoken to she's spoken to one of the townspeople, some, yes. some girl who's gone, oh, I don't know. Yes. And that's when she goes, right, here we go, here's the opener. Yes. Well, she's only spoken to one person. Yeah. And then, then she feels the need to then do the intro. Yeah, it was. I imagine she wrote all that. So she wrote all that pretentious junk yes. about what you know. Yeah. About we've got the we've got the Blair Witch, and yes. this is what we do, and this is what we're investigating. But but interestingly enough, though, you can see that she's acting within acting. So that's why it was so cheesy because acting she, within acting. What yeah, does that mean? Well, basically, she was being dramatic. It was dramatic acting. Her tone that she used and everything, because you almost had to you almost had to look at it that she was it was completely pretending in it because you had to then, yeah that's what I'm saying you, you don't know do you had to take that away from what the you had to okay. take that, that away from the uh, hit the boom arm he's I've got into a meltdown. Problems. I've, got a, I've got an issue with your I don't think your voice is picking up very loud he's got. He's gone into meltdown this is the thing it's oh, quite okay. far away from your mouth and that oh, anyway. shall I go in well, well we've started now yeah. we've got 20 so, minutes in <laughs> but is, is so, this what it feels like to be Fiona 
I'm getting a fucking word in here. Yeah. Just letting you fucking Yeah, I know, because it's for the first time ever, Ben. Jesus. You got me on here, so here you go. So like this, I've got actually quite passionate about this film. Yeah, because, clearly. Well, I actually, I like simplicity and I like the fact that simple things can cause such a reaction like that. That's why I like it. And I think the fact that you don't know what's real and, and what's not real. She was a major pain in the ass throughout it, but then she apologised at the end and blamed herself because it was her fault. Well, that's what I'm saying. So do you go, oh, actually, do you know what? This performance is really effective. She's doing a great job. Or do you go, oh, this this Heather woman who's playing Heather, who's playing herself, she's dreadful, actually. She's terrible. This is what I'm saying. Because she's not acting as such, Mm. it's like, well, hang on a minute. She's just really bad. Hence why she got, there was a humongous backlash after the film and everyone hated her. I'm pretty sure there was a huge backlash from people saying, yeah, Heather was dreadful well i think she played an assertive female in the film she oh. was assertive but then what, but what then... speaking over people asking someone a question going oh what do you think of the blair witch well oh well, that's all she does she yeah. asks people questions in the town mm. and those two anytime those those two speak mike and josh she's fucking speaking in the background mm. she's constantly talking she asks someone a question before they've even had a chance yeah. to answer it she's talking about it or she's speaking over them or she's yeah. answering the question. Yeah. Or she's asking a different question. Yeah. She, I mean, she was overly assertive in the film, overly assertive. But then the dynamics did change slightly because if you see the two guys come together in a sense because they didn't have much choice and they almost become quite bullish against her, didn't they, in a sense? And I think they didn't have much choice because she was overly assertive, I think. And the fact is they had no control because she had the map. She was the one who knew where they were going, supposedly were going. So she had control of the whole situation, which I think um, unbalanced them slightly. And I think that's why they started to become a bit bullish, because it was almost as if they were trying to gain control back. But the fact that he kicked the map into the into the river was a totally irresponsible thing to do. So it was it was strange how the dynamics did change. Hang on, I need to go to the toilet. Fuck oh. Bloody hell. Oh, are we still recording? Are we still recording? Shall I shall I sing something? Yeah. Shall I do like my office? I actually know how you feel, Fiona, in this situation. Just thought I'd put that out there. Um, yep. Okay, just keep garbling on on my own. While Ben's doing a poop, even though he says he's doing a wee, he's probably doing a poop. Got your poop spray up here, though, Ben, if you need it. Just saying. Oh, toilet's flushed. He's returning. Here he comes. Yep, should have done. Right, okay, yep. yeah. I think that also the fact... Oh, she's back. I'm back. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> so the other thing yeah. I was saying, how interesting it was that the rumours after the film is that people were still convinced that these actors were dead, that the footage was still was ro- was was real, and that the rumours after was, was that they were dead and the families were getting sent cards of condolence and all those kind of things. So again, I think the power of marketing and the actual... The, 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 the film itself... People found it very, very difficult to separate reality from, um, you know, from the fiction. It's a strange one, but I actually think it was so cleverly done to to actually convince people. I mean, sometimes it doesn't take that much to convince people about weird stuff. But I think, again, that it says how successful the film was. Maybe that's what Fiona feels like. I'm the Heather of this podcast. I ask her questions and I just talk over her because she yes. just talks shit a lot of the time. Yes. Well, because well, I ask her a question and she just doesn't. She just comes out of just nonsense or doesn't doesn't know the answer to the question, so just tries to drop a bit of trivia. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Maybe I'm the Heather of film floggers. Yeah, you probably Extremely are. Extremely unlikable fair. and annoying. Well, you see, I Jeez. came in with a game plan, you see, and mine was to literally say as much as I possibly could well, I know, clearly. in a short time because I just thought I'll just do completely what you do. Right. That's because I've I've just got loads and loads of notes. Yeah, and yeah. I've got loads and loads well, of notes. But well, yeah, but the thing is, though, I can't. You know, I'm letting you speak. I'm being polite. I'm being respectful. Being polite. And I don't. I'm not passionate enough to jump in and go. Oh, do you know what, Mum? No, I'm not having that. Because yeah, I don't. I don't disagree with what most of what you're saying. 
my biggest thing is it's like yeah it'd be nice to go back to 1999 was it mm. 98 or 99 99 and watch this for the first time in the knowledge that oh my god i think i think this is real this is so fucked mm. i can't believe it you know i think back to well i can't remember the first time i watched it no idea i was still, I was still young not when it first came out but i think i must have been I don't know, 10 you would have i imagine told me that this is real or i'd have gone into it thinking this is real so I watched it, and then I, I remember Jamie came over, and what, then we—it's the Blair Witch, the Blair Witch, yeah. And then we watched it, me and Jamie, and we got about halfway in, and Jamie was fucking shitting himself. <laughs> I don't remember. So he was like, "Oh no, like, I don't remember we, we this. I stop. swear you're to... making this no. up." He goes, well, "Well, I might have to stop this." I wouldn't let you be watching that at yeah. ten, eleven, maybe yeah, eleven, can't. twelve at a push. Oh, here we go. We're going up. We're going. Well, up. it wasn't We're going to twelve, eleven, I think thirteen, maybe fourteen. So then I had to, I had to get reinforcements, and I had to get you to come up and watch it with us. I don't remember. <laughs> But I'd already, I'd already seen it, so I, I'm not... I don't remember. I would never have allowed Jamie, someone else's child, well, this is what and happened. put him through psychological yeah, torture. This is what happened. I would never have done that. Ben. Not, I think why, you're why making, that up. No, you're making that, that up. You're making that up. It's like I thought bad you'd brought, parenting. I thought you'd have brought this up. No, I don't remember yes. that at all. Because I was, I thought, oh, you're going to bring this up, and when I say the story, you're going to go, oh no, you, you were the one who was shitting yourself, Ben, not Jamie. You're the one who came I to get me, not Jamie. Re- I never remember that. Yes, well, this happened. This happened, I definitely. Know. I can't confirm the ages, but we were, we were young. Because I, no I said way. to Jamie, let's put this on, and we watched about half of it. Or we watched maybe three quarters of it. And then I said, because I knew the ending, I was like, oh, the ending's going to really... Where did we live when you watched that film? Kingston. Right, okay. Well, of course it would have been, because... Yeah. Yeah. So then and Jack- I told Jamie about the... I didn't tell him what was going to happen, but I said, oh, this ending's really messed up. And yeah. he was like, is it? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, well, are you sure? What's your mum doing? <laughs> so I was like, oh, oh, poor right, Jamie. I'll, I'll get her up just in case. Oh, then. poor just, Jamie. Just in case the witch comes out the TV. I, I, I still can't believe that I would have ever allowed well, yeah, someone else's well, child I'm to watch make it up, that. Am I? I'm gonna make I, I think it up. you are. I think you've got the time. The time. Yeah, but it's not. Time. It's not complete. It's not like well, it's deranged, Blair Witch. It's not like it's. Yeah, we weren't. We what? weren't sitting up there eight. You know, a, what a pre-drinks going. Oh god, oh, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, but I eighteen think- nineteen. You've got to think back from when it first came out at that time. And I think it actually was quite a disturbing well, film. Yeah, the ending is disturbing. Yeah, it's and disturbing. some of the, the events going on are disturbing, yeah. But, but it's, w- it's not deranged. No, I mean, I've watched it recently and I watched it during the day. I didn't watch it at night time. I watched it during the day. And because I know it, it doesn't it doesn't affect me like it would have done back in the day when I first watched it because obviously I, I know the background to it now. So it's very different. But then the, some of the mythos is quite unsettling, I suppose. The serial killer stuff is yes. quite... Quite nasty by the sounds of it, but it was made up. Well, I know, but that's like anything, though, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's all made up. They they made that up. When I watched Freddy Krueger, when I was like four years old. No, yeah, but let's let's let right. the listeners understand. Yeah, the how sto- that we, we, we've spoke about the story. Yes. yes, I snuck in. Yes, yes, my dear father yeah. was was asleep or whatever yeah. he was doing. Not that I I literally turned the TV on and went Ben, yeah. come in, here, but, let's, let's watch this. Yeah, but I'm saying at that age. When I see Freddy Krueger wobbling down the alleyway with those big arms, I'm like, oh, God. Amazing scene. He's going to, he's real. Yeah, amazing. Like, it's like anything. <laughs> For example, most people at some point in their life believe there's a tooth fairy flying around the place, building houses with your teeth. So seeing Freddy Krueger wobbling down an alleyway with those arms, I was like, yeah, absolutely. I'm buying that. Oh, dear. I can never sleep again. He's going to get me in my dreams. I'm fucked. <laughs> so. You have to get to a certain point where you, you start having a mind of your own where you go, well, I'm not sure about this. Oh, yeah. Blair Witch Project, I suppose, again, which was so effective, is that people, adults, were going, oh, God, is this, I think this is real, apparently. They weren't just going, oh, that's a load of shit, isn't it? Come on. You know, come on, we need to know the truth. This is rubbish. Yeah, but I think even people, even though when they were told it wasn't real, they actually <laughs> still believed it. Yeah, okay. I guess, was, I guess that's it testament that to the film, then, isn't it? Yes, it was that effective. Oh, we've been going forty minutes already. Yeah, it was that effective oh, that people it's to be actually a fifty minute job. They actually believed it, and I, and I think that's that's testament to the film. Well, that's what I'm saying. This is what you know. Yes, I guess I've given you a platform to air your opinion. Yeah, you know, I, I could obviously push back and say, well, what yeah, about this? Can. No, but I don't. I don't really need to. Yeah, but push back. I, yeah, but, yeah, but I don't you need have to be challenged because it, well, you've got but, to give me a different yeah, perception I, of the film. I'm not passionate enough to, to challenge you on it in terms oh. of I don't, I'm not sitting it's, there going, I'm not sitting there raging going off, oh my God, I think you're completely wrong. Yeah, for, for what you've said, I can't dispute the marketing stuff. Yeah. I can't dispute its impact on the pop culture. I can't really argue with the fact that it revitalized the found footage genre. It, shot it into the mainstream yeah that's yeah fair enough the impact it had on 
small independent films and filmmakers. There's not a lot to dispute, is there? If you if you said, oh, do you know what? I think I think the actors were amazing. I think Heather's put an absolutely brilliant performance in. I'd go, well, hang on a minute. But then even that, I'm conflicted because I'm going, well, actually, was it top notch? And that's why it's, it was so effective because she was doing such a good job. But I keep coming back to the idea of, well, hang on, well, she's acting. But again, the fiction and reality going, well, hang on, the, the line's been blurred here a bit. Where do I sit on this? No, and and, and I get that. And the, the fact is, I think it's one of those films, it depends on if it's your type of film. I just think for me, it's, it sits well because I just think it was effective in terms of what it was trying to do. That's how I see it. It's, I, I can't turn around and say it's one of the best horror films out there because it's not one of the best horror films. Out there. I just think it was so effective in terms of how it was done. Well, I think its premise is certainly makes it yeah. one of the best I mean, those found actors, footage. Those actors didn't know films. that 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 it was made up until after they done after they done the filming. They they thought. Oh, hang on a minute, what? Uh, well, again, this is reading from no, no, lights, no, no, loads no, of different. Well, I have to push things. back on that. What is that? What? So the actors got to the point where they were so no, they in were given fits of hysteria. They were like, hang no, on, no, no, is they... there actually a fucking witch? The no, 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 I don't mean that. I mean that they were given the thirty-five page script as such the notes the, the mythology that the directors and, and writers had put together that's what they work from they thought that that was true they thought the mythology was true they thought that there was right. a witch they thought that there was this serial killer so they based their performance as well based on the fact that they thought those things were true because they did it that way to make it so that the actors how they acted was they actually thought those things were were real so it, it's all psychological. It was it was very cleverly thought through because it took two years of planning to actually put that together and then decide on who the because originally they were going to get three guys to actually play and not have a woman in it. But apparently she she was so good in her audition and they decided to to put her in. But apparently originally it was the plan for three men. I understand how some people wouldn't like the film. And I understand the inconsistencies, and I and I completely get that. And I'm not saying there isn't because there is. Well, some of the some of the elements of it are obviously a bit. Again, after rewatching it and watching it again, stones being put out on the on the yeah. floor, twigs being dropped off at yeah. the door, witch arts and crafts hanging around trees. It's... But then you know, in some ways, I don't want to criticise it because if you compare it to some of the junk that's out now mm. in the found footage genre in horror. And this whole jump scare obsession with a lot of these films. Well, it's, you know, for, for what it was doing at the time, mm. I don't think it's been matched or beaten. And overall, for what it's bringing to the table, I don't think any film will be able to fully replicate what this film did. No. What would you put against the paranormal activity? What would you say was the better film, though different? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I can't stand paranormal activity. Mm. I mean, there's only a, a few scenes I can't, I can't in that, stand, that are I can't stand, chilling. I can't stand looking at footage when you see a film being advertised or you see these screenings of people in cinemas when they're in their seat and they go like, oh, oh, that makes me fucking sick. When have you ever, have you ever in all your years sat and watched a film and screamed <laughs> or jumped out your fucking seat? No. Do you know what I'm talking about? When, yes. they, when they advertise films, they're like, yes. it's the scariest film yeah. ever seen. Yeah, it's crap. Yeah. Like Paranormal Activity, I'm pretty sure there was loads of people there in the was. cinema and you're seeing, yes, I'm sure the music's turned up loud. Yeah. In those kind of screenings, I imagine there's there's maybe people running around, you know, shouting boo or tapping you on the shoulder and then scampering off. Oh, oh very scary. Oh, I'm scared. Yeah. Oh, it makes, it's so unbearable when you see these people sitting there and they're, they're petrified. Yeah. And they, they come out and they get interviewed. Oh, God, how was it? Oh, God, you know, I threw up and mm. stuff. Oh, my God. But was that so the film chilled. that we watched and that we sat under a blanket and watched it and then thought this was crap and then suddenly oh, that this? scene, it was the scene where suddenly you saw the footsteps or something happened and then we shit ourselves, but it was literally just one scene in the film. Well, yeah. Do you remember that? Not, no, years and years really. ago, it was on Halloween. Yeah, but there's some films that are scary that yeah. make you jump and make you un unsettled. Well, Blair Witch at the time when it first came out. I think Blair Witch but is better. What I'm saying is there's no film that I've ever seen mm. where I'm, I'm jumping out of my seat. You know, my head's hitting the ceiling because I'm so scared. But then recently you did a podcast with um, Tom about, was it Lake Mungo? Yeah, well, that's pretty fucking unsettling. Yeah, yeah. I haven't watched that. That's, so, that's really unsettling. Yeah. That's horrible. Yeah, but is it horrible? Is it horrible because it's frightening or is it horrible because it's un 
settle in? What? What? Well, why both. is it so horrible? Both. So then, that's an effective, successful film, then, isn't it? Well, yeah, it is. Like Mungo's Top Notch. Yeah, I haven't watched that one. Right. So, in terms of found footage films, apart from Paranormal Activity, what else have you seen? Which I think oh, I think is shit, isn't it? I think it's largely shit. I did. I, it's I mean, not I didn't enjoy that film. Uh, uh, there, obviously, there's the sca- there's a few scary bits in it and stuff, and and that's fine. But it's all you're almost. It's, it's one of those films where when you're anticipation of something, you're waiting for something, and I get that. That's what the the point. Well, is this is what I'm saying. With jump scare. This is what it's just an obsession. Mm. That's all you're getting with a lot of these mainstream mm. films. You know, some of the Conjuring films are fine. Insidious. Mm. Oh. Have you watched The Nun? That's no. sort of your type of film. The Nun. Why is it my type? of Because film? it's shit. <laughs> How insulting, Ben. No, but it's... Well, you know the nun from The, the Conjuring? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. She pops up and you see her a little bit in, in yes. number two and you're like, oh, that's kind of scary. Right. Maybe. So they made The Nun. Right. And all you're getting is creep, creep, loud music, nun. Creep, creep, loud music, nun. Oh, it's fucking unbearable. It's unbe- It's so... It's boring yeah you see i don't i don't really enjoy the modern one i like the freddy krueger films i think they were just fantastic for me i can't better those those types of horror films um, well creeps are a found footage film that's quite good that's, yeah, what, that's on that. netflix that's quite good i've seen that have you yes creep there's a couple of versions of creep we did creep in london underground I'm, yeah the london underground one the yeah. older one from years ago that's the one i've watched which yeah. i thought was oh, very so you good. haven't seen the one with the serial killer no is what that the was? later one the newer one. Well, no, no, it's not. It's not connected. They're oh, different. it's different. They're just both called no, I haven't seen that. Wreck, the Spanish one that me and Fiona did. Yeah, is that a scary one? Well, pretty scary. The last yeah. ten minutes are I unbelievably seen that. good. Right. House LLC. Is that what it's Never called? Never heard of it. That's that one I told you about with the um, the clowns and this house they find and they. I've not heard of that one. There's all these things in this house and they're trying to turn it into like an amusement Halloween thing for people to come visit and there's a, there's an event at the start where people go down into the basement. All oh, right. No, I, have, I don't no, think that's I've good. seen that. The Poughkeepsie tapes. Fuck Never heard hell, of it. That's that's really heavy. Is that disturbing? Yeah. But disturbing in what way? Disturbing. Just just really unsettling. Bleak. What's that about? Oh, it's just about this guy who kidnaps. Does he kidnap kids as well? Maybe maybe not kids, just women, all and right. then keeps them, and then starts, well, I guess, torturing them, and right. he films it all, and he's got all these different tapes of various yeah. people he's picked up. No, it's pretty good. I think that's one that's quite unseen. I think I don't think a lot of people have seen that. It's good. Yeah, I don't think I've... Yeah, there's loads. There's loads of possession films. The Taking of Deborah Logan. There's loads of those where it's just a yeah. CGI fest. Deborah Logan. Maybe that's not. See, I, I like the, CGI the older heavy, ones. But... I like the older ones, like the the you know the Jason and the. I no, like, yeah, I just no, like no. The I'm talking about found ones. footage. Like. I'm not talking about the horror genre. I'm talking yeah. about found footage. Well, found, I don't. I haven't seen a load of found footage ones. Have you seen Jason Takes Manhattan? Do you like that one? Yonks ago. Oh. Yonks ago. Fucking Dan Mackles made me watch that. But uh, that's not for me. Those later no, ones are not shit. for me at all. Host. I host. think I've seen saw host. host. We saw Host last year. Yeah. That was all right, I suppose. Yeah, I think not I've bad. seen Host. Yeah, we saw it last year. You know, the Host, where they're, on the, they're doing the sales. Yes, yes. And then it yes. starts kicking off. I remember off. that. It's, yeah, I remember that. You know, it's all right. It was all right. For what it was, for, you know, it was being made. It was made in lockdown. It was all right. But the, the ending of that, again, I always just find endings. That's why I like the Blair Witch Project, because I actually find that ending good. Even though it quite you leaves through loads of questions, I think it's actually quite Well, that's effective. what you want, though. You don't want to see it. Yeah. The temptation now is you get loads of jump scares yeah. and you see whatever's chasing them. Yeah. You see the entity. You see the ghoul. You see the witch. Yeah. Whereas with Blair Witch, you wanted to look around that corner of that wall to see what was there. I think in the Blair Witch, they could... I wouldn't have been completely offended if they'd have just had, like, someone walk by. Just some feet mm. or something. I think that would have been, that would have been okay. Yeah. But is that the point? Is the point that the witch isn't actually there? It's an entity. It's not actually a physical being. It, no. It's just, it's around, but it's not actually, yeah. you can't see it. Is but that then, not the point of it? Well, but then was it a witch or was it locals, deranged locals? You don't know. That's the, that's the theories, isn't it? You don't know what it was. That's the thing. It could have been deranged locals. It could have been that bloody deranged brown woman or whatever her name was. Brown? Who's yeah, that? that's something Oh, the one brown in the caravan the or where <clears throat> yeah. she's living. yeah. That's why they oh, do yeah, it. Oh, they... yeah, but to be fair, didn't she say she saw the witch? Yeah, so they leave it open, don't they? Everything's open because it could possibly have been her because she had the twig gate that had cloth tied at the at the thing. So it, it's all o- open to interpretation, isn't it? That's why I find it quite... How how did they find the footage? This footage is, is recovered footage. A year later, apparently. Right, so, so that means that someone else or another group of people must have taken the same journey they did apparently. to go to the house to go, oh, what's this? Apparently, yeah. Or, but they or don't what? explain, as, as the witch do they? fucking, what, she's mailed <laughs> yeah. it, is she? 
apparently it was just found. So they never found the bodies. They never found it was just found. And that's why the missing posters was up because they were always missing. Apparently that's that's the way. Well, that's why it was. But this isn't this isn't new, though, is it? This whole based on a true story. You know, you got you got that in Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That's why that used to that used to scare the shit out of me. That film because every time it was on late at night, mm. I used to go, "Oh, here we go, right? Everyone's in bed. Let's yeah. get get this on." And about twenty minutes in, I was like, "Oh God, no, I'm shit myself." <laughs> because also, one, it was it was really unnerving, and two, you got the bit at the start when it did the opening crawl and it said, "This is based on the Sawyer True. family. Yeah, 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 this yeah. is based on real crimes. Yada yada yeah. yada. What you're about to see, yeah, is taken from yada yada." Yeah. So I was like, "Oh God, okay, this is real. Then all right, okay, well, yeah, I'm, I'm ready for this." Oh no, I'm not. I'm going to turn it off. But then, I'm myself. isn't that interesting? Because if it didn't have that at the start, would you still feel like that? No, that's what I'm saying. Because it's I thought it was, clever. I thought it was real. Yeah. So like, this is when I'm again. I'm I'm not what like eight mm. or nine. I'm I'm ready for Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That. Whatever you do, don't believe. No, that. I'm, I'm saying I've, there was times when obviously I I put it on TV late at night. Yeah, not at eight or nine. Just want yeah, to. But I'm, no, the point is, but you were asleep or you were somewhere else. Oh, so right. that's what I'm saying. Still so I snuck I snuck down and put it on. Yeah. But the point is, I made in a recent podcast is I was like, yeah, here we go. Mm. But I'm pretty sure I never got I never got through it because I was shit myself too much. Yeah. But it, again, until I got older. Yeah. Again, it's it's it, it it's the psychological side of things, isn't it? It's just simply thinking that it's true, and it it, it makes such a massive difference to how you think about something, because if you didn't have that at the start, your mind wouldn't think that way, and you deal with the film differently. So it's, it's all psychological, and that's what makes it so clever. These types of films quite clever. It's not a gore fest, is it? It's like you, you know, you've recently done the Saw films. I mean, the first Saw film I thought was quite a successful film, because, but it's a gore fest. It's no, all, all right. about let's torture and do whatever. Well, it, well, it's not. It's not really not that much. As it goes, it starts they get to worse. the game. Yeah, it's because, ridiculous. Yeah, because well, what do you do, like? Yeah, they are ridiculous. The first, but they're quite successful. The first Saw is, is not really about the game. The game stuff is secondary. Mm. It's not really about the games. It's about the jigsaw character. Yeah. But it's about these. I know there. I know that the two guys are in a game. Yeah. You don't really mm. get a lot of time spent on the games. And then as Saw continues, yeah, they were like, right, here we go. How are we going to continue this story? Right, we're just going to just keep making more and more elaborate games, more and more mm. unsettling, gory games. Yeah, and it just which got... is you know fine if that's what you want. This whole yeah. torture porn shit, but yeah, it just you know it just gets boring after. Yeah, a while. it does. It's 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 disturbed. I see. I find that disturbing. Whereas the first Saw. Although disturbing, I actually enjoyed it because it was a good horror movie. It just it gets when you get the the second and the third and the fourth, and it just becomes like you say this just brutality. It, it it's kind of it turns you off. Right, let's wind down because yeah. I've got to edit this shit. Oh, it's, it's supposed to be a, a, shit. it's supposed to be a fifteen minute. Yeah, it was never going to be a how, fifteen minute. How the fuck we're we going to do fifteen minutes? Well, I just You'd have got for about notes. two of your points. I, no, I'd have just read. I would notes. have got a word in. I'd have gone boom, 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 boom. Jesus, I look forward to the next one, Ben. Oh, right, so I'm final thoughts then. Anything that's that you need to get out about the Blair Witch to end off? No, I think I've said it all. I I, I enjoyed the movie. I think it still stands up um, today, but probably just in a different way. I think you've just got to look at it, watch it open-minded, and I think people still will watch it and convince themselves that it was true footage. It's very easy to criticise now, but you know this is 20 years later, and... As I said, for the hundredth time, it's like, well, imagine this back in when it first came out. Yes. And the hysteria and then the yes. build up of all this stuff going, like, oh my yeah. God, this is this is a bit different. Yeah. So well, I don't remember it. I don't remember the build up well, of that's that a film. I don't remember the build up of the film. I don't remember any of that. I just remember watching it. I don't think I watched it when it first came out. That was the thing. I think I watched it later. Um, so right. I so by the time you watched it, were you aware that this is actually no. a true story? No. So I when don't you, think so. So do you? Right. So. No, I think when I watched it, I was unsure. I wasn't. I wasn't quite sure because I hadn't. I hadn't read the background on it. I didn't. I didn't know about the hysteria because again, the internet was all new at that time as such. So I hadn't. I hadn't read about the hysteria. I hadn't read all that. So I actually went, and I'm pleased about the fact that I actually when I went and watched it, I went into it with a, a pretty much open mind and fresh mind about it. So I, I think at that time, I I thought it was real. A little indie film making mm. quarter of a billion dollars. Incredible. Which just doesn't happen, does it? But, it's so talked about. It's such. It's a film that's just so talked about. I just, you know, it was just successful in its own. It's in its own right. I think, love it or hate it, it's it's one of those films that it will always be spoken about. It's a classic, isn't it? It's just a, one of those classic horrors. Well, I don't know, is it? Well, yeah, yeah, all right, yeah, fine. Simply for how it was, how it was filmed, and the idea of it. 
Well, it's not been bettered. No. It's concept. Yeah. But as I said, it's, you know, so based on that, it, it's its own separate thing in many ways. And the fact that Heather did need a punch in the face all the way through. I mean, Well, maybe it was a masterful performance. Maybe maybe that was one of the greatest performances of all time. Could be. And I'll take the my easy, hat off The easy her. thing to say is that it's unbearable. But Yeah, easy to say that. And I'd, I'd take my hat off to her if it, if it was, if that wasn't her character and that was pure acting. Well, my... you'd hope. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure she's not. You know, I, I keep going through the same question. Oh, is this is, is this just Heather, and she is she just terrible? You sort of hope that she's not. I'm sure she's a lovely person. Maybe. Oh well, yeah, I'm sure she is. Sure, she sure was just really, specific. really phoning it in. Yeah. As I'm saying, maybe it was the greatest performance I've ever seen. And people have I just didn't been nasty, nasty I, about her. Yeah, I was going to say I didn't realise that she took an absolute uh, backlash after that. Oh I didn't yeah, know. well, yeah. yeah. I guess, absolutely hammering. Yeah, I guess you get you. Yeah, thinking about it, if if it's conjured up those feelings when I was watching it and it had the annoyance of her, then I guess you multiply that by the amount of millions of people that have seen the film. So I guess yeah, which was a it's, maybe it's a little bit unfair. I don't know because she's she was part of that film and and its success. So right, okay. Well, there you go. Um, Great. did Mummy do well? Yeah. Going to moan about me later to Fiona. Yes, it was fine. Yeah, didn't butt in. I realised that maybe I'm the Heather of the podcast, so yep, I'll keep my mouth shut. Yep, I think you probably. Do you know where right. you find film vloggers on all the socials? All the socials. All... Yeah, apparently Facebook. Yeah, Instagram, really Facebook. Twitter. Yeah, all and those. And you do game vloggers, but actually not at the moment because no. you get very, very impatient with it. No, no, and well, very stressed bit out. More than that. And he won't. One day he won't let that. me play Overcooked on it, even though I've asked and asked because I want to wear my hat. Well, how are we going to fit three people? And up he here? won't let me play on it. Why well, know, so, but it's it's fitting a, a third person up here. It's always an excuse. No, he never. Yeah, lets well, that'll me be the next thing. We'll get you on the game vloggers. I want to play how exciting! On lovely on game vloggers. Yeah. Just you know, deny me the pleasure, but there you go. Good. Right. Yes. Okay. Well, there you go. Thank you very much. Yeah. Pleasure. That wasn't... Anything else? Not really. I can do my all this. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, it's almost an hour, this. Jesus. Right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Right. So for fucking October, Ben wants to do 31 days, 31 films in 31 no, no, days. No, forget about that. Just where they can find us. Oh, right. Okay. You can find us on the Facebook, the Twitter, the Instagram, and on TikTok. But Ben doesn't do TikTok because he doesn't like it. Need kids. Want, ch- want children. Children apply. <laughs> he also does um, the game vloggers, but we don't do that because we, we might uh, do. We might do. Over- we won't. We're gonna we're gonna go back on Overcooked because Overcooked has the Halloween mm. DLC. We're gonna use that. It's gonna mm. be really fun. And if you like what you hear, don't forget to like, share, and tell a friend. And don't forget to send in your 15-second reviews. Oh, God, yeah. Thanks. How am I going to fucking fit those in? Good pods. Pod chaser. Oh, yeah. On Apple, those things. Apple podcast reviews. Yep, Spotify. Sopranos Redefined. Oh, yeah. That's out. Ooh. That's another thing I'm doing. How's that going? Well, it's, yeah, it's okay, yeah. Good. It's not on Apple yet. Well, hopefully by the time this comes out in October, it will be. So, you know, right. can have a look at it. If you like Sopranos, have a look. Right. If you like Dan Mackles, Christ, poor you. Have a listen. What about if you like Ben? Mm-hmm. Well, then you're in for a fucking treat. If you don't like Ben, is he a waffler in this? If you like Slip, like Sopranos, just have a look. Are you a waffler in it? Yeah, probably. Hello and welcome to What's Our Seat Number. If you're listening to this trailer, you're deciding whether or not you're going to listen to this podcast. Good. But chances are, we've lost you already. Uh, wait, what? No, come on, Matt. What? Well, I Why? mean, it takes, it takes what, like 10 seconds for people You're to lose interest defeatist. in things? I You're am being not being defeatist. defeatist. They've you gone are. already. It's for now. Then, well, now they are because we started arguing, so we've both sort of driven them out. Well, go right, on, just then. Go on tell, to, tell the dead air who we are. Okay. The dead air. The dead air. The cadaver. The people who aren't listening anymore. I'm taking control. You introduce yourself, and then I'll introduce myself, and then we'll talk a little bit about what we're doing, right? It's going right, to sound right, more professional right, that right. way. Okay, go. okay, okay. Uh, I'm Johnny Gross. I am a filmmaker and a film fan and fanatic and obsessive good very good that was very well done very professional you sounded like you're in control and almost like you know who you are all right then and who are you i'm Sai. i'm a 3d artist and a game designer a film fan uh i'm your brother as well really we're going to be talking about some of our favorite movies and hopefully some of yours as well there's going to be trivia behind the scenes do you want to tell the listeners why we've called this podcast what's our seat number you really came to the right person with fielding this question because i feel that i can take this story and really bring it to life okay so one time we went to go and see a film in the cinema and i asked what's our seat number 
fantastic. Was it good? Yeah, yeah. I did it for you. It's great. If you want to hear more, you can check out the rest of our episodes. We're hosted by Podbean, but you can also find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music or Audible, TuneIn Alexa, Listen Notes, and now on iHeartRadio, Player FM, and Podchaser. So pretty much wherever you get your podcasts. Please don't forget to review, like, and rate, and keep listening, because the more you listen, the more we'll be able to produce. Bye. Ta-ta. Ta-ta.